guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and I'm back with another review to The Walking Dead. I am now reviewing episode 7 of season 9, which was called Stradivarius. And say it a little easier now, I've been practicing. This episode was interesting to me. Uh, it feels a little bit fillery, just a little bit, but in a 16 episode season, as we've seen in the past few years that they've been doing this, they usually throw in about two or three episodes that are really kind of more about a bit of character development, usually slow to plot development, but still interesting in their own ways. And I guess in this one, we were really just kind of seeing a little bit of the state of Hilltop because we really didn't see a lot of it in the last episode. And we also got to know the new group of people a little bit better. Uh, their strengths, a little bit more about their dynamic. We don't still know a lot about their backstories, but as we know with The Walking Dead, that'll likely come as the season progresses. But overall, as I said, not a lot happened outside of the fact that we have a reason now. I think the show's kind of finally dropped the little sprinkling of a seed that shows why these communities are finally going to have to come together because as we've learned in the last episode the past we don't know how long it's been exactly but it seems like at least the last several years they've been working independently of each other and basically not even talking to each other which is not really all that uncommon i mean in the real world how many countries have several different cities that are close-ish to each other but how often do people really interact and talk to people outside of their own communities, it's usually quite rare, especially if everything they need is is right in their community. So we need something, we need a catalyst to bring them all together. We know that in last season or the season before last, even se uh, seasons um, seven and eight, it was all about Negan and the saviors. They were kind of the driving force to bring these communities together. And now we need something else. And then sadly, it looks like it's going to be another threat. <laughs> But I guess in this world, that's pretty much the only thing that really does bring people together is something that's so huge and big and unsurmountable that they simply can't take care of it on their own. Let me just jump into a couple of the points that I wrote down. I didn't write too, down too much because I don't, don't feel like a lot happened outside of, as I mentioned, those character development moments and getting some information drops. One of the big things, I guess, is Daryl. He's given himself a bit of a self-imposed exile, and we've seen this happen with characters in the past, namely Carol. She did this back in, what was that, season five, six? She kind of left everybody, didn't want to be around people, didn't want to deal with the communities, didn't want to be part of humanity anymore, and just wanted to isolate herself where she could just sit and grow her little garden and read books that she found and be left alone. And then of course we know that Ezekiel pulled her out of that eventually and the need to join something did. But now it's Daryl's turn apparently. It sounds like for the last, well we don't know how long, but it's been a while. He's been living out on his own. He created his own little man camp there in the middle of the bush. Apparently Carol's always known where it is, but she expected, I guess she expected Daryl to come back. Cause my guess is that Daryl was in charge. I know Daryl was in charge of the sanctuary before Rick died. And after Rick died, it sounds like he probably just walked away from it. He didn't want to do it anyways, let's be real. And sanctuary fell, it sounds like very shortly after that. But after Rick died, it looks like Rick, or sorry, that Daryl set out on a mission to try to find Rick because there was no body. And obviously we know that for especially this OG group, they really don't like the idea of their person walking around as a walker. They'd rather put them down themselves. So Daryl went on this hunt and he realized there was no body, which there should have been, you know, or at least pieces of one. And so it's given Daryl this little hope inside that Rick may still be alive. And if not, then at least he wants that closure. But I think it's just Daryl's way of feeling or dealing with the guilt. I mean, I half joked in in the uh, the previous episode where Rick died that this was Daryl's fault as well, just like Glenn's death. But I mean, obviously it's not directly, but that fight with Glenn, that's or that fight, sorry, with Rick was partly what drew Rick away that day, and that whole interaction between the two of them. I'm sure a part of Daryl is probably thinking Rick would have been at home chilling with his family if we hadn't had our stupid little tiff. And I mean, it's the second time really that Daryl has gotten into an altercation with or caused somebody to kind of go after him, <laughs> and they've ended up being dead. So I think Daryl's developing a bit of a complex. And anyways, he clearly I think feels like he probably can't face anyone really because. Even though Maggie and Rick had their issues, they were super close. And Maggie was the ruler of Hip Hilltop, so he probably felt like, I can't go there. Does not want to face Michonne, most likely. Probably feels badly, especially if he can't bring back the body or anything else. So I can see Daryl just deciding, like he said, it's better for me to live on my own. Just 
survive the way I always kind of have and sit here with my guilt and be by myself. But uh, Carol wasn't having it the same way that Daryl kind of checked in on her when she was doing her exile thing. And Carol's given him a reason to come out. I think she realized that just asking Daryl to come and stay at the kingdom was not going to work for him because Daryl, we know ever since Alexandria started, Daryl's had a really hard time with integrating into communities. He just never feels like he fits in. He always feels like he's the odd one out, the sore thumb. I think it's because he doesn't bathe. But yeah, he just wasn't going to come to Hilltop, uh, just, or sorry, to the kingdom um, on Carol's bequest. So she finally had a reason for Daryl to do something. And I think giving him the task of taking care of Henry, which is a real thing, because that child, my God, needs to be put on a leash. He does not understand the concept of staying put and just listening once in a while. If he makes it through this season, it really is gonna be a miracle. And I swear if anyone dies for that kid, okay? But I digress. But it's a real thing. Henry, Henry does need someone there to kind of look out for him. But as Carol said, she needs Henry to kind of learn a few more life skills and be a little bit more edgy. I mean, Henry likes to think he is, but he's not. And I mean, again, this is taking in mind that he did murder somebody when he was a child. But, <laughs> But that was revenge, you know, that was a completely different story. I think we need, Henry needs somebody to kind of help him take a little bit of those rose color glasses off and realize how to be a little bit more efficient and effective and worldly because I can see Ezekiel wanting to hold Henry back from that because Ezekiel is far more about peace and love and the farm man and you know, he just really doesn't want Henry to, he wants Henry to be a child. He wants him to have that experience and that is very commendable. But this is a world where kids gotta grow up fast. Kids sadly gotta be more like Judith who are dual wielding at 10, who are able to sharpshoot at a distance, who are ready to wreck fools, who can listen when they need to be listening to. You know what I'm saying? Like Henry needs a little bit of edge and Daryl might be the right person to do that for him. And also because he's someone that Henry can kind of look up to and respect. Because while he does that with Ezekiel, as I said before, Ezekiel's looking at him as a father figure and isn't going to want to do anything that might harm him, so to speak. Whereas Daryl, I think, would allow him to have a few hard knocks the way that Carol probably wants to, but wants to keep Ezekiel happy. You feel me? So, yeah, giving him this this mission, this this thing to do and watching Henry and giving him someone to be responsible for. I think it's very smart and strategic of Carol to give this to Daryl to help him kind of reintegrate back into society because he's going kind of feral out there because we need people, right? That was a theme through so many past seasons of this show. You can't go with this world alone. You do need people, not just to, to watch your back with walkers, but as humans, we need other people. And it's not enough for Daryl to only interact with folks like once every year or so. So now that he's kind of coming back a little bit, I thought that was hilarious that as soon as he showed up, they're like, we're going to go look for someone. You want to come? And Daryl's like, yes, thank God. I didn't want to have to hang. <laughs> I like being out someplace where I don't have to actually deal with real people. But I think we'll see him kind of reintegrate. And I do hope that they give Daryl something of substance this season. I mean, I've never been a massive Daryl fan, although I did really like him back in seasons like two and three. I felt like he was on such a nice little arc. And then it's like the show didn't know what to do with him anymore. And I just think it's kind of sad because Norman Reedus does have decent acting chops. You don't get to see them very often on this show. But uh, it'd be nice if we could get something a little substantial with Daryl's character this season and give him something and maybe this storyline with taking care of Henry or mentoring him in some way and him getting to be an older brother for once instead of always being older brothered like he was by Merle and by Rick. Maybe it'll bring out a different side of Daryl that he didn't even know he had that could really change him in a positive way. Uh, the other big news, of course, as I said, was the the news of Hilltop and how Hilltop is doing. And we discovered that Maggie is gone. She's no longer running Hilltop. Now, I did read online that uh, the actress who plays Maggie, what is her name now? It's completely slipped out of my head. But she has temporarily apparently left the show. It is not 100%. Lauren Cohen, that's her name. Sorry, my brain was trying to find that name. She has left the show, but apparently she has agreed to return for season 10, but she will not be in the rest of this season. And I don't know the details. I just read that she is basically not coming back. And that's why the show, <laughs> what, at least six or seven times we heard very clearly they say, Maggie is gone. Gone is Maggie. Maggie is gone. Maggie's not here. Did you hear from Maggie? Because she's not here. It's like, we get it, show. You've made it abundantly clear. We do not need to expect to see Maggie again anytime soon. She gone. Now, there's a few things that are a little bit hinky about this storyline. I mean, at least with the Rick storyline, if them not killing him off, he's in a place that we knew was out there 
since season seven, right? So it, it kind of makes sense that he could be existing out there in a place that no one's seen before and no one knows about and no one knows how to get to. But but Maggie, it's kind of like, what? Like how, where? Where would she go? With a baby, right? Herschel would have been, we don't know actually, we don't know when she left. Of course, the timelines in that six year jump are very fuzzy at the moment, but where would she go? And where is she going that she can send people to get, like to give letters to people and have them take it some, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, maybe we'll hear more about it. Maybe we'll actually name a community that we're just never gonna see, but it just seems very weird and kind of unfinished. The whole idea that Maggie's just out there and just decide to go someplace like recklessly go somewhere with a with an infant. That just doesn't make any sense to me. It seems very strange. And why? That's the other question. I mean, I would understand if the whole, if Negan is somehow out and about, but Negan's still locked up. She knows Negan's a broken shell of a man, or at least she was the last time she saw him. He seems to be doing a lot better now. But like, she doesn't have any real reason to leave Hilltop that I can think of. So it's very interesting, and they didn't really get into details, and they may not. It may be something that they'll get more into when uh, Lauren decides to come back to the show. But as it stands, she's gone, and she asked Jesus to take over taking care of everything, but clearly, as we know from when we first were introduced to Jesus and Hilltop, that's not Jesus' bag. It never has been. Jesus is not here to save y'all, okay? Not this Jesus. He is about himself. You know, he does care about the community, obviously. He does care about the people in it, but he never wanted to be the person to run things, because remember, he even told, was it wasn't Maggie? Or Rick or someone way back when that they actually wanted him to be leader before Gregory, but he was like, nah, I don't want it. And that's why he let Gregory be the leader and, and just supported him all that time. So we see that continuation now. He's there. He's not loving it. He's not about the bureaucracy of, of running things, the mundaneness of it. He's the guy who likes to be able to go and come as he pleases, go out on missions. It's just not in his nature to sit still and deal with red tape. So it seems clear that that's what Tara wants to do. She's already doing it, it sounds like, 90% of it, where Jesus is kind of just handling the formalities of it all. So I can see them setting up, obviously, for the shift to go to Tara being the leader of Hilltop. And that would go and that would coincide with the other news, which was announced that uh, Tom, I can't think of his last name again. This is all gonna come back and forth to me. I'm so sorry, names are just not with me today. But the guy who plays Jesus, uh, he's also leaving the show this year, this season as well. That was announced. They have not announced this, the uh, final episode he'll be in, but he's not staying uh, past season nine either. So I see what they're already doing with the show and kind of setting him up to exit as the leader, bringing Tara in as the new leader until Maggie comes back and then whatever happens to Jesus. But he's not loving it and Tara's not loving having to keep track of him. And it looks like Hilltop's doing really, really well. We saw all the crops. We saw everything seems to be going like a well-oiled machine. It's thriving and it's doing well, but it looks like um, Hilltop is planning on attending this fair that's being thrown by the kingdom. It looks like that Alexandria is the only community that's not participating and that something must have gone down between Michonne and Maggie. And I just can't imagine what that would be because the last time we really saw them interact, it was about the Negan thing, but then Maggie didn't do it. So they were kind of cool. Unless Maggie was still upset with her over keeping Negan there overall. But it just seems strange that Michonne would not want to see Maggie. So there's a lot of questions still out there as to what went down, why there's this animosity, it seems like, between uh, Kingdom, sorry, between Hilltop and Alexandria via the leaders. And also why, it seems like Michonne basically shut Alexandria off from what I can see is basically what I'm getting. Because if Hilltop and Kingdom are talking and going to this fair and hanging out, why is Alexandria the only one that's not seemingly in the loop or at least at a leadership level? So there's a lot of questions about that. It may all come back to the fact that Michonne is very shut down as far as letting new people in and maybe even opening her doors to the people she already knew. But those are questions I'm hoping we're going to get answers to as the season progresses. And yeah, that kind of just dovetails nicely into the last portion, which was, of course, the group with Magna and, um, oh gosh, I can't remember all their names, honestly. It'll probably start to stick later in the season, but we have them traveling. Michonne clearly still not really trusting them, but their whole thing about their caravan and coming up on that area and seeing that they weren't lying it built Michonne's trust in them about this much more, but she clearly still has an issue, I think, primarily with Magna. But I know a lot of you talked to me last week saying, hey, like Magna's, she's not wrong and Michonne should see where she's coming from because Rick did the same thing. And I don't think it's a matter that Michonne doesn't understand where Magna's coming from. 
And I think there is a part of Michonne that realizes she is being a little unreasonable, but I think what it comes down to is that they're holding all the cards. Michonne and Rick and his whole group came to Alexandria all those years ago. Deanna and her group were so, were in a place that they were so desperate for people and for people who had their specific knowledge and skills that Deanna was willing to take the calculated risk of bringing these people in knowing that even if they didn't have their weapons, I mean, we already know that so with people like Rick, he don't need a weapon to be lethal. You know what I'm saying? He'll bite people's throat out and stuff. Like, he don't need weapons to be lethal if that's what he needs to do. Like, she was taking a huge calculated risk bringing in that group, period. So it's one of those things where it's just a matter of how it's being viewed. Like, Michonne is clearly, she's lost so much in Michonne's head. Like, if we go to Michonne's point of view, she lost her first family. At the very beginning of all this, she went into isolation mode, right? That's what Michonne does when she's grieving. She shut down. She had walkers on chains. She didn't talk to people for God knows how long. She meets Andrea. Andrea slowly pulls her out of that dark place, helps her to start trusting people again. It takes her a while, right? Because all of season three, Michonne was pretty much a ghost. And then it wasn't until into season four, we really saw her start to open up and become part of the group and make the decision when she went looking for Rick and Carl that she really wanted to have a family again, whether it be like an actual like intimate family or a, a wider one by community. So it took her a while to do all of that. And then we've seen her, you know, through Negan, she lost how many people? We lost Glenn, we lost Abraham. She went through all of that. But really what kind of kept her from losing it all was still having Rick. Rick was her rock. Like Rick became her anchor in this world and it was the same vice versa and then he was gone. And honestly, if she hadn't been pregnant, which we didn't know at the time, with RJ at the time, I think we would have, I think she would have lost it. I think she would have totally left Alexandria and she'd be out there wandering with wherever the hell that Maggie is right now. But that was the real huge blow to Michonne. So coming from that, losing what's dear to her, and in Michonne's mind, she probably thinks that a lot of that is inadvertently because of new people and trying to establish new relationships. I can see how she has this distorted and hyper protective view of not letting anyone else in as a way to protect the things that still mean so much to her, namely her children, which are the most important things in her life now. And by extension, I could even see her being even a little bit more unreasonable about it and thinking that all the communities had just gotten along in the first place or hadn't been such jerks about making this bridge thing happen, maybe Rick wouldn't have been out there. Like all these fights and disagreements and all the things he was dealing with before this all went down. It's sad, but as humans, we sometimes, if, if, if a tragedy happens while we're in the midst of doing something or in the midst of something that's going on in our lives, we sometimes make an, um, an unnatural attachment to those two occurrences. So for example, if you were I don't know, driving and you have a serious accident and someone dies, for example, you might suddenly, some people sometimes develop a, a crazy fear of vehicles or of road. While you know logically that it's not the highway's fault or it's not the car's fault that the accident happened, that's just the association that's been made because of the way that you were emotionally and how you dealt with your trauma. And I wouldn't be surprised if with Michonne, she's just thinking, you know, she was making this charter. Rick was trying to unite all these, these places. He was getting into fights with all these different people because he was trying to make this happen and everyone didn't necessarily agree. And all of that was happening in the midst of this death, this massive tragedy that happened to her. And she lost the love of her life in that moment. And it's just probably all just, all of it, anything that reminds her of it is probably just something she's trying to shut out of her life at this point. And just, she's just in protection mode. I lost my man because I was trying so hard to make this whole thing work and this is what I get. You know what I mean? So not rational, but I could see something like that being the case. And we saw with that moment with her and the, the guy who saves all the instruments when he was talking about how it's so important for people to come together and art's a way for people to come together and share stories and bond and create communities. Like that's the things that are important. And you saw Michonne kind of have that moment where you saw the mask come down a little bit, the guard came down a little bit and 
she kind of, you could tell she could, she really heard what he said. And it's been so long, I think, since she's had those optimistic, because she had those optimistic glasses on before Rick died, right? We know that she did think that there was a way to rebuild all of this, but as quickly as it came down, it kind of came back up and she was like, we gotta go kind of thing, because she's just been sitting in this guarded mode for so long. But I think we're gonna see as this season progresses and now that we've got this whole new threat coming in with this herd of walkers that be chasing people, there's new reasons why everyone needs to come together and I think that's when we're gonna see Michonne have to drop those guards because she's gonna to have to, to get along with everyone and figure out the best way for everyone to work together moving forward. So that's basically it guys, that was the episode. It was, like I said, it felt a bit fillery but it wasn't terrible as far as the character pieces. It's always good to hear more about backgrounds and get a little bit more of a fuller picture of who we're dealing with. After all, Walking Dead's foundation has always been about a character drama with a side of zombies, so it looks like things are gonna pick up quite a bit next week, though. Rosita's gonna be awake, she's telling everybody what she saw, or she's trying to, and Eugene, they do find him in what looks like the creepiest set they've done yet. It looks like there's a cemetery nearby, there's fog everywhere, walkers be stalking. It's gonna be interesting next week. We'll see if these guys actually figure out the whole story behind the whispers, or if they're gonna think that I, what I thought <laughs> towards the end of last episode, that walkers be talking and what are they gonna do about it? So I am looking forward to seeing how things go down next week. What did you guys think of this episode? How did you feel? Do you think that we could have had a little bit more action, a few more important things go down. And do you think there's a possibility that Maggie has found the same place that Rick's at by some strange, weird coincidence, since she knows those women exist with that book that she got all those years ago? Do you think maybe Maggie has found that same community and is hiding out there and basically saying deuces to everybody else? Please. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you're thinking. I love getting into that conversation with you guys. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.